Ah, no, a bit more. Four things there. One, you saw Simon Dickinson. You like the syllabus or not? You're blending, okay? No, it's not my syllabus. Some of the things in the syllabus I like, some I don't like. I wouldn't have planned my syllabus like that myself. Yeah? Okay. Especially on the theory part. Two. Mrs. Gosling said, when you write something, you have to connect with chapter four. Yeah? She always emphasized that. Yeah? I wouldn't say must. Lah. I say it is better that you show overall knowledge. It's not like, okay, this part, you know, please answer come to which part in the syllabus, not something which page doesn't work that way. So, she said, when you write optimization, she wants you to look back at Mars or Weber or Durkheim and bring those materials in. Yeah. Third point that she made was that globalization is not a person but a process. <coughs> yeah, that's what she tried to emphasize. She said, oh, people say, oh, globalization respond is responsible to the social ill, globalization is good, globalization is bad. And she said, oh, globalization is not a person. She just wanted to try to say, globalization refers to a process. You know? And we have to recognize that. And I mentioned that. The fourth point that she made just now, which is interesting and very important to you, is the distinction between transnational, I'm sorry, internationalization and globalization. And that is the important part. Internationalization and globalization. Then it says that two different things. That most people somehow move them. Yeah, they didn't recognize that internationalization is not yet globalization. And then Simon told you what is the distinctions, what are the distinctions between these two ideas. Internationalization is connection between countries, right? Inter between countries. Globalization should be much more than that, according to them. And the first idea called inter-nation means you still have nation. It's still national-based activity between nations. Yeah, people travel to the country, but they still have national citizenship. You know, uh, companies are still nationally based. Yeah, they still have uh, separate countries. It's inter-nation, but still idea of nation is still there, very strong. Yeah, according to the religious now, that one is not called globalization, you know. Mm. What is globalization? Yeah, globalization according to the religious now is about, Mrs. Costin liked to use the word transnational practices, transnational. No, another way to think about it is that the absence of national based actors, the absence of national base, have we reached that stage? Mm. That would be the debate. Have we reached the stage we call globalization that activities across the globe doesn't have national base? Yeah? And we look at that. There are something that can be done. Yeah? Many things doesn't reach that stage yet. But you think about it carefully, just now you give me a few examples, right? Yeah. The example of internet, mm, that one, maybe the RP doesn't have national base anymore. Yeah? But when you look at other things like floats, like uh, the economy and all that, yeah? we'll look at that when we come back for the theories. Yeah? And you know some theories, you bring in your examples, and that is your paper. So, uh, after the break, uh, we have a break now. After the break, we'll be one of the theories that we can do. And then um, you will get back your assignment. Yeah, we can take a look at your assignment a little bit. And we have tutorial for uh, 13 last time on theory of knowledge. We are going to do our tutorial, and I have asked you to help look for answers. If you haven't done that yet, you would have to sacrifice your brain to do that, because 
I would go and collect your answer. Then I ask you how to do it. Can I tell you how to do it? Okay. During uh, maybe after the break, before the start of our tutorial, I maybe I'll give you like three minutes writing it down in two lines. That's all I need. The topic sentences. Okay. So let's have to three minutes. Then you come back and uh, we'll try it out. Well, you know, I think it will come directly from the subject guide. However, if you go through the exact questions in the previous years, some you need to interpret quite a bit. You know, you have to apply quite a bit because it doesn't follow the subject guide. So we are going to tackle these two. What? Is it new and real? Yeah. For here, the answers that you can give could come from David Hell. He can help us. David Hell categorize the theories or the theories of globalization into the skeptics, the hyperglobalists, and the isolationists. Yeah? There's something called the skeptics, the transnationalists, the hyperglobalists. I keep moving square that side, but then he keep coming back here. I don't know why. What do you have? I think that was a mistake, you know, in the formatting. Square. Should be that side. Yeah, this plate should be here. Hirsch and Thompson, I place this as example for you. Not David Hell did not. Then we have created these categories. I said from all the theories that you see, we can, if you want to consider the ideas of whether it's new, it's real, whether it's complete or not, whether it's inevitable or not, we can put theories into three groups. One called skeptic, one called transmissions, and one called hyperglobalist. It was I who, who give these as your examples. Hirsch and Thompson never said, oh, I'm a skeptic. They have never said that, yeah? Robertson didn't scare. They never said, I'm a transformationist. They have not, you know? Omae, McLuhan, Fukuyama, they didn't say they're hypothesis. It was I who placed these as your examples. Yeah? What did David Hell say? He said, he, uh, did he say, the theories can be grouped into three different groups according to what they think about globalization, specifically whether they think this new is real, it's a complete process, it's inevitable. So, in terms of new and real, the skeptic say it's nothing new, not real, not happening. They are skeptical about globalization. We have it, no we don't. We don't have it. Yeah? And later when we go into Hirsch and Thompson, you will know. We don't have it because what we have is information from Washington. International, not globalization. Yeah? It's very clear from there. The DVD actually speak out of Hirsch and Thompson's idea. Yeah? They're skeptic. We don't have it. The hyper is, is another extreme. Hyper. They're hyper. They're over the board. They say globalization is real, it's new, it's, we are living in it now. Yeah. Transformation is say what? They say, yeah, we are having it. <clears throat> now, that's a lot of different positions within transformation though. Skeptic, not many. Hyper, not many. Not many. These are extreme, too extreme. So people don't like to be extreme yet. So you see, a lot of people are classified in transmissions because they don't want to be extreme. So therefore, there are a lot of many positions within it. Right? So most people say, yeah, we are experiencing it. Some say new, some say not. Why don't you write it down? You know, some say new, some say not. Yeah, like he didn't say not new, you know, for example, yeah? Robertson said it's new, kind of, you know. This class is new. So later 
we go into these uh, individual theories. But some say new, some say not. Okay. What about if done? The high per se is done. We are living in something called borderless world. The skeptics say no, not done. We haven't got it yet. Yeah, the translation is saying not done. It is transformed. It is still globalizing. Yeah. Is it inevitable? We definitely will have it. Yes, it is inevitable. That is according to the high love. No, it's not. We may not have it at all. Yeah? This one translation is they don't know where it's going to aim. Because globalization is still processing, yeah, it's still underway. So we don't know it's going to reverse or it's going to go into a complete stage. We don't know. So these are different ideas. Yeah? So to repeat, theories are captured into two different groups according to their ideas about new or real, uh, complete or not, individual or not, according to their theory. Yeah? These theories, they didn't come out and say, okay, I'm going to tell you whether it's real, it's new, whether it's complete, or whether it's predictable, they didn't say that. Yeah? They really didn't come out and try to tell you these uh, items. Yeah? It is us. We say, if they ask us in the exam about new, real, complete, and the beautiful or not, we can rely on this theory. You clear? Yeah? If you don't need to speak, also never mind. Another way to do it is to know the theories. There are about 20 theories here. Yeah? I said you don't have to know them all. <laughs> you have to know about six of them. <clears throat> and you say, okay, all these six are. Any questions also can do. Ask me new or real, I can do. I can take two or three to, to, to discuss. Yeah? That is also another way to do it. Right? Okay. Now, have you said that? I said there are about 20. You need to know about, I think, about six to eight. Yeah, eight, I think, would be maximum. Yeah? And you say, you have to locate those people who can help you, exp uh, who can help you answer any questions that you ever think of in the exam. Then you have to think. We have to look through the exam questions that have ever asked you. Yeah? What kind of questions uh, that we can you know, kind of locate this? And slowly we'll try to choose. I would say we have to choose some materials, some ideas, some skeptic, some hyperbolic, some transformations. Yeah? And based on that, because you know, some the individual may be economic. Yeah? Wait. That's not I say materialist idealist, right? That's why. You have to know skeptic hyperbole transformations. You have to choose theories that will help you answer this. Okay. But when you look at materialism and idealism, you have to branch a little bit more into economic politics culture. Yeah. Now, the difficulty is that how do you choose about six or eight that have all these things in you know, that you can debate? On skeptic hyperbolic transformations, if, if the debate is going to that direction, if the debate is about materialist idealism, ah, you can bring at least two to debate on this. Four would be better to be had, right? But two would be okay. Yeah. Or if they ask you for like economic, politics, social, and all that, you can at least we bring one each for each point. Right? So we're going to go slowly, with understanding, we start to choose. The first guy here is Kenji Omae. The borderless world, the end of the nation state. Now, if Mrs. Lawson were to be very fussy and you know and say, you will need to know which one sociologist is and it's not, and the exam question say sociologist. If they are not sociologists, you can't use, you can't use this guy. He's not a sociologist. He is a business expert. Yeah, he is a business guru, a Japanese business guru. So therefore, he's not a sociologist. But I told you, I've got to talk to the new director about this kind of thing, which I don't agree. 
Yeah? That you have to come to know who is, what smaller detail you should be knowing their ideas about globalization. Not having to be concerned. They are businessmen, they are political scientists, they are sociologists, and all that kind of thing. Okay, anyway, this is businessman. What he said? Borderless world. Nation state is. Now, if you think in terms of skeptic, hyperbolic, and transmissions, why would you classify this guy? From the book he wrote, The World Without Border. Nation state. Nation is. How would you classify him? Will he be a skeptic? Hyperglobalist? Yes. So easy. From the book itself, it really tells you this guy is a hyperglobalist. He said the world is without border. Nation state has standard. Because why? Flow market is fully integrated. He made use of the economy as his key explanation. Was he influenced by Marx? I don't think so. He is not a system. Yeah, I don't think he's influenced by Marx. Even though he used the market and economy as the key explanation, but the tone of what he said is not a critical tone. A Marxist will have a critical tone. That economy exploiting people, global economy exploiting, he doesn't have that. Yeah, but he used the economy as the key driver. What he said is about whole products, McDonald's, Nike, Levi's, it's the product that is spread that is spread all over the globe. Right? When products spread all over the globe, mm. yeah, this is not showing you shelves with uh, phone, iPad, iPhone. I told you it is the whole product. It's also global image. So the image of global consumerism is also spreading all over the globe. Yeah? Facilitated by flow flow of information that myself is preparing. Global flow of communication clearly the convergence of ideas and tests. So we have consumer culture, you know, and that all, these are all self explanatory, don't need me. Stress the power of consumer. Consumer know that these products are available elsewhere, they also want it. Yeah? Because they demand this product, work habits will have to create it for them. So the power of consumer is you know, consumers are being very powerful. That's why you see worldwide availability, availability of branded goods like all these and profit from my country can be invested. That, but never mind, you can read up yourself. Economic activities are now free of geopolitical constraint because a firm can source its set, uh, capital in London, locate its industrial plant in Malaysia, have database in Tokyo, hire individuals in California to decide factory output. Something quite like what Simon Dickinson says now, when you have different parts of the world doing different things. In the nine what we call it, a good example is supply chain. You know supply chain, right? You know, when one country produces one product and it has to be connected, this kind of thing actually supply chain idea kind of support the times view of division level the India, uh, the I India, the N I D L, new international division of labor. Okay, anyway, supply chain will be a good example. When economic activities are free from geopolitical constraint. So, what is happening now about globalization is time. It's a straight line, it's linear, with it an extrapolation. Last time we don't have, getting more and more and more, and now that complete. We are living in borderless world. Nation state withered away. Nation state died. We don't have border anymore. Borderless world. Because nation state ends. Yeah? Now, when we think of nation state, yeah, one way we think about nation state is government. Yeah, here it implies that the role of government becomes very difficult. Government doesn't have much role to play anymore. 
The nation state has to become an unnatural human dysfunction unit for organizing human activities and managing non-believers in the modern world. We don't need the government to manage the economy in this modern world. In fact, when we have the government, it's not good for globalization. In the past, the state was very powerful because the state has big role to play in protecting borders. Yeah, but now there's no more borders. Yeah, the state have to protect the country, have to uh, strengthen their military might, you know, to generate wealth and all that. But now, the state, what the state can do is to ensure the economy is open for trade investment. So. The, the state doesn't have much role to play. It is the economy that operates on its own. And the economy doesn't need the state. So, when the state intervenes in the economy, it's not good. You know, according to the rule of supply and demand or free market principle, it's not good. Huh? So, the state now give way to the economy. The state, the only thing the state does now is to enhance, is to open the country for trade and investment. If the state wants to control the market, the state will be punished by the global market. The state should not interfere in the market. If the states do, or if the governments do, they will be punished by global market force. Example is the ERM. ERM is in your subject right, called the European Exchange Rate Mechanism. This is the example that shows that the government should not interfere in the market. The government can't win the market. The government should just open the country for free market to operate. Yeah? And when there is free market, when the market of when global market operates freely, that when we have globalization. Yeah, once the government interferes, the government will take restrict, trade restriction. You don't have free flow or global flow. Now, what is an ERM? The ERM, European Exchange Rate Mechanism. That is the mechanism that is imposed by the EU. You know EU, right? Last time the EU got you know, composed of different, different countries and they uh, organize themselves as a union, European Union, just like us, like that, right? And originally, hmm, when they come as a group, they got to make sure that the currency is stable. Okay? Because if you have different currency, the currency fluctuate a lot, it will affect other currency. So you have to try to stabilize it. Then they create the ERM to try to stabilize. They set the limit as to the fluctuation of different currency, how much it could go up or down. Yeah? Pound sterling, which is the money of the UK, was in the ERM last time. Yeah? But somehow during this Black Wednesday, the pound was sold out past the big rate set by the ERM. Why? Because George Soros, you know George Soros, right? He's a financial trader, yeah? And he's a quantum fund. And you've got to know George Soros, if you're doing like economics and stuff like that. He keeps selling down the pound. He attacked the pound, just like last time he attacked Taiwan. Yeah? In, uh, what, 17, 79? No. I don't know. Okay, he attacked Taiwan, and Taiwan was sold out so low. Last time before he attacked Taiwan, one bar, no, I'm sorry, one US dollars was about 30 bar. During that time when he attacked Taiwan, one US dollar was 40 bar. So the Taiwan was very, very weak. That's why I got no money, you know, no money in the country. Because money last time somehow disappeared. Yeah? Especially people who borrow heavily, yeah? how to serve the loan. Yeah? Yeah? Last time we got 20 bar and serve one US dollar, now we have to come up with 40 bar to serve one US dollar. That's why the economy all collapsed at that time. Yeah. Same thing happened there during the Black Wednesday. Now, they sold it down so much, but not because the, they, the UK government had to stabilize the pound. Otherwise, you know, you cannot, it cannot be kept in the European, in the EU uh, currency. So, the UK government pumped in lots, lots, lots of uh, money into it. 
billions of pounds raise exchange raise interest rate. Cannot. Still was sold out until government news. Okay, that's that's the reason why now uh, UK is now not using the euro. It's using the pound sterling. You go to the UK, it's just pound. It doesn't use euro. Yeah. So that happens during that time. This is to prove to you that the government can't win the market. The government can't win the market. Whatever the government tries to do, still lose. The George Soros, all free market. People can buy and sell the pounds. People can sell currency. Yeah, it's fine. So according to uh, Omae, it's uh, he said the government, you know, better let free market operate freely. Don't interfere. You can't interfere. You don't have the ability to interfere. Look at the ERA bring the black money state. Yeah. Okay, that is how it's going. Now the nation states are often overshadowed by international organization. Yeah, so that's the reason the state doesn't have to anymore. The state doesn't have. You don't need military might of the state. The state is not about military. Now the world operates by the economy. The economy, the state has no control. Yeah? At the same time, also there's the emergence of international organization that is much more powerful than the state, an individual state now. Okay? That's Omai. Do you agree with Omai? That the world is fully globalized. That's summary of this idea. That the key driver is the economy. That the state is referred to. How to your friends? Just two minutes. I'm coming. They ask the same question quite often. The key driver is the economy. Oh my, say yes. Yeah? Yes. Whether you agree with me. Yes, the key driver in the globalization is the economy. See, we are talking about world product, world consumer culture. You know, people share ideas about having these products. They demand it. The global uh, capitalism help them create these products. Yeah? The state has no role to play. They give way to global market and give way to international organization. Do you agree? This will make a purpose of what they want. Yeah. And the way you write it depends on the exact question. Yeah? Not difficult at all. Not difficult at all. So this part here to apply this thing to the exact question should be easier. Okay, but it depends on the exact question. Okay, can I come ask you again? Can you give me an idea about what you think about globalization? Okay, what do you say? You agree? It is globalized. You be careful, yeah? If they ask the key driver is the economy, and if they ask a driver is the economy, it's different. If I say the key is economy, it can, you cannot say made, you know, you know, it has to be yes or no. Because we are asking the key, you know. If the question say a driver is economy, then you can say, uh, a driver is economy. Yeah, you can say, yes, it is, but there are other things too. But the key must be one. Do you think it is that one? Can you agree that what economy is important? The state, we turn away. Why? Okay, company can just set up as and where they want. What do you think? You agree? He seemed to agree with Omae. He, he seemed to be uh, Omae follower. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Oh, don't agree. It will be easier. So you agree that the state is with the way. 
companies can just go and set up companies wherever they want. Okay, so if uh, uh, you know that website that promote, yeah, what is it? Free, what, what? Extramarital relationship in the website? Yeah? Want to come to Singapore, want to go to Malaysia, they can do it freely. But you, I thought you said the government doesn't have any role to play. You can set up companies wherever you want. Hmm. So how? What do you think? You agree with them? These are all my followers. Disagree. You disagree. Yeah. Why? Uh, take for instance North Korea. We can't go there open business. We have to think, think of a lot of things. There are politicals. Politics and uh, for example, last time Myanmar also have an open up also. So yeah. Oh see? Yeah. So I told you for what? Discuss that? No, I made different ideas. Yeah, he said. He said, no, 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 the government still has a lot of role to play. He said, no, you know, you can go and set up companies wherever and whatever you want. Which one do you agree? Um, disagree. Or which one? More. Um, one. Which one? Uh, the world is fully globalized. It's not yet fully Why not yet? So the guy said the economy is fully globalized. You said not yet. Why not yet? He's a hyper guy. He's a hyper guy. So hyper in, invites you to reject it. Don't you think so? If you're a hyper, no, it invites people to attack it. You know, in a way you can attack it. You know, if you go along with him, ah, okay or so, he doesn't say it's wrong. But mm, then you have to bring examples. When you bring examples, you should bring examples that people can't contest. Only then you win the debate. Now, having said that, sociology paper is a debate. There is no right or wrong. Yeah, no right or wrong. It's just like your exam question is the motion for debate. That's your exam question. And it calls you to bring tea to debate. Yeah? Proposition agree with the question. The opposition will reject the question. Yeah? And where are you? Are you going to be the judge? You can, but you don't have to. Yeah? If you are going to be the judge, what you have to do is to give both parties a fair hearing. When that is a topic in the exam, the motion for debate, you've got to have at least two different ideas yeah? to, to explain it. Those people who come and debate have to produce evidence. So, just like in the debate, yeah? Now you've got to say the economy is fully going. See that I give you an example, you know? All these uh, Nike, Levi, Starbucks and all that, you see everywhere you go, you see it. That's why the whole product has been created. Consumer culture or even people in the province, you know, they all know about all these Starbucks. They, they are exposed to all this consumer culture. Example. The other party will come and say, where well, are uh, millennials? You know, you see restriction from other countries. Myanmar yeah, last time not opening up. Now this time starting to open up. North Korea is still not yet. You want to set up companies, you want to bring products into this country, you can't do it. So you have debates. In the end, in the end, you may be the judge. I say you don't have to because sometimes you become a judge. Eh? It will be interesting but high risk, high return. Because if you want to cite one party, yeah, you've got to have very good justification. Yeah, and the reason why you say, okay, that guy, you know, is more interesting, more realistic to say about globalization. You have to have very good evidence of your own. Alright? Okay, that is Omae. Oh, oh manifesto is very long. Okay, we just do one more manifesto. And the information age. They can 
economic society and culture, the rise of network society. Castell, the way Castell is being organized in your, in your subject guide, yeah? Castell spread all over many chapters. Yeah? Now, in your subject guide, they start with chapter 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah? Chapter 5, 6, 7, 8. These are all globalization. Chapter 5 is intro. Chapter 6, economic. Chapter 7, politics. Chapter 8, culture. And something like Castell spread over these different chapters. So what I did was, I know, very hard you know, to go Castell today, next week Castell again, and another week Castell again. So I put them all here for you. So that you know what Castell said. Yeah? So you will see Castell. Later I'll tell you, you know, one chunk comes from this page, and another chunk comes from another page. Okay, he wrote about IT, uh, information technology. Economic society and culture, the rise. No, no I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hang on, hang on. His book is called The Rise of Network Society, written in 1996. But in your subject guide, it labels Castell as the information age and the culture and society. Yeah. So he was looking at the IT. ICT or IT, you call it IT, information technology. Information and Communication Technologies. Looking at that, that is globalization. And already, I think, I think, I think, he thinks not yet ended because this trend is restricted to most powerful in society. Poor people, people in the poor countries are not connected to the ICTs. So to say it's complete, not yet. That's why I put him under transformations. Yeah? Here, you won't be surprised. Some people may call this a hyper, actually. Yeah? And in fact, I think it was from the religious now that Mr. Gosling said, some people, some part may sound like hyper, some part may sound like transformationism, some ideas. And Mr. Gosling said just now that, don't be so rigid in labeling his people. You know, he's hyper. He definitely is a hyper male now. Yeah, some of the ideas can be transformations. Yeah. Depends on what you write and how you want to bring it. When you write, you don't even have to label them. You don't even have to label. Pastel is a transformation, so you don't have to do that. that a transformation is it's just for you to remember. So that when you bring Pastel in, oh, this idea is like not the time. And then you can write from your understanding that he's not a hyper, not a skeptic. Alright? So, then he says the transformation is not yet complete because it's still restrictive. His uh, idea is about technology and economy. Now, in your subject guide, there is no chapter, no, there's no separate chapter on technology. Don't have it. One chapter is the economy, one chapter politics, one chapter the culture. Don't have a separate chapter on technology. Technology is then used as a facilitator. Yeah? Because it helps in the economy, it helps in politics, it helps in the economy. Here, Castell looked at technology, but connect technology more with the economy. How technology helps global economy. Yeah. ICT is very important to him. This one not important to you. You're not going to use this. You <coughs> write your exam. <coughs> now, information is everything. Production is about production of knowledge. We don't use garments and shoes and all that. Those are all society. Those are industrialization. Now, information is the new raw material of production because we are producing knowledge. It Pervasive. It is pervasive because it, for me, in all activities, yeah, we use technology in buying and selling, in economy, in the government, in media, in social, you know, all areas. Network logic predominates. Now, later we'll talk about network, we'll elaborate on that. It is highly flexible, can be adjusted, that's convergence. We make use of a lot of things, you know, when we, you know, integration of microelectronics, Never mind that, that one is not, we're not going to use it, I don't think so. 
what you want to write is about this one also not in your subject right that is it history of the ICTs no how uh, information and computer technology has progress how we have we start having personal computer industrial production of optic fiber and all that just what we I don't think you will actually use this in exam. You know, because it doesn't show the connection, it shows the history of how these communication parties was developed. Ah, this is what is important. Because ICT has created something for local society. This is a new type of society today that did not happen before in the industrial, in the, you know, the 19th century period. Not even early 20th century period. Network society is the new type of society today. Network society. This one, jump on to another page. Yeah? You have to dig it up from this page in your subject guide. Network is now a new structure of globalized society. New is a social morphology. Morphology is a structure of organism, actually, the word follows from my structure of organism. So we are talking about structure of society today. It has replaced a hierarchical organization structure. Last time, organization is hierarchical. Now people say, mm, you know, that one is not important anymore. You know? Now what we have today is the society that composed of different networking, network of uh, small companies. We call it a set of interconnected nodes. Points, interconnected points. These points are companies, business, yeah, our cities, our stock exchange, network of people, in the economy, stock exchange. Yeah, you know, stock exchange, network of stock exchange in different countries, when stock market, one market fall, the other market fall, if that goes on that overnight, uh, straight time, that's when index will drop today, for example. So you see the connecting nodes of this stock market, politics, European Union, example, culture, network of television, mobile phone, and these are all self-exploratory, you don't need me. Now, what we have is that because we are floating around, we are all the time connected. So, he said, we are always present. We are in a space of flow, not a space of place. Yeah, things happen through ICT is immediate, instantaneous. Yeah. We can trade, we can buy self currency, instantaneous. Yeah. Instantly. We can do it anytime. Currency is a very good example. You know, you can wake up at 3 a.m and call up and say, I want to buy Japanese you, you can do a stock exchange, you can call up and say, okay, a US market open now, you know, can I buy a, what Apple share, for example. You are always awake. You are always there. You're always trusted. Yeah? That is what globalization is. Important note is the economy that operates in real time. This one connect with the one we said earlier on. Also encourage the network firms. Now let's have a look at these two ideas. The economy in real time and the network firms. The economy in real time comes from this page. Yeah? And that includes what I said just now. Uh, stock change, financial market. Operate in real time, you buy, you sell anytime. Yeah? You buy, you can buy now, you get now, you sell now, you get now. Things happen in real time. Things that happen in one part of the world have immediate effect. On other parts, that's also done. E commerce, you buy now, you get now, you pay now, you can use PayPal to do it. When you don't have to wait for money to be transferred. Last time, take a few days to transfer money. Yeah? Now, I mean, then you can guarantee that you buy this and you pay them immediately. The economy in the world. Okay, now, look at this point. All the firms and production are local and regional in scope. Even though that is still national base. However, they depend on a set of core features that are global. Ah, that's another kind of 
right? So national base, but even when your company is still national base, even this company is still Singapore, all SIM, Red Talk, still national base. But these companies often make use of global financial market when they take loan, when they deposit money. You know, when people buy and sell that things, they still need global financial market to do that. In the national trade, they trade outside that has international production. Yeah, very often. Or uh, now, if you talk about supply chain, you know, a lot of things are not generated within Singapore. You know, a lot of things, a lot of products are uh, imported from other countries. So, in exam, I have to come out to you that from now until <coughs> the rest of it, because we are going to write essay, right? And you have to select that. Now, the point that I say, quite important, I should have <coughs> labeled it in, in, in highlight here, yeah, is that even though it's local, but they make use of core features that are global. You don't have to write all these features, you know? You just single out one, like you can write an example. You get it? So one that you can write about is example, probably global financial market or whatever. Yeah? You don't have to get it complete. You don't have to. Yeah? If you're afraid that you they don't know that you know it all, you may say, okay, for uh there are you know some features that are global, namely one, two, three, one, two, three, and simple all one to explain. Don't explain all of that. Because if you just take one or you take three, <coughs> you don't have any difference in the of mark because it doesn't show anymore. You got that? Yeah? I'm going to <coughs> reinforce that again. Network firm companies are using network. Now this one is about supply chain. Example is supply chain. <coughs>
collection of many activities due to our demand for it. That is called buyer-driven commodity chain. Yeah, this is, you see I have partial this. You see, you see all these come from many different countries. This is example of supply chain. This is example of globalization. But then some people say, but it's still an American company. Nah, that's when the country is saying. Okay. Right? Okay, what else? Oh, my belief that economy, okay, this one, you go back and do it up yourself now. Yeah, because I mean, Power. 
Then anyone there can give it to me. Then you can say mass is for social change, the kind is for social order. That. Yeah, but there are many ways to introduce sociology. You can say sociology, there are many debates with sociology, materialism, idealism, now you can there. Yeah, and the mark is a materialist. He, he contributes to the materialist idea. Then the paper becomes a materialist, materialist paper. You know, if I ask you what is this paper about, you've got to tell me. Oh, this is about materialism of Marx. This is about a uh, social fact of the kind. No, this is about so many things I also don't know. I can't tell you, but there's so many things in there. So in the intro, if I ask you for a uh, contribution, you've got to say, okay, yes, contribution. Yes, this is important for sociology. It helps create sociology. And this idea could help explain the problem, which is, what is the problem you're going to write about? All the whole thing, if you ask a question, has to show up in the introduction. Clear? The rest of the paper will just elaborate the introduction. Nothing new. Clear? Now, let me just have a look at the comment that I have that which is I wrote down in the comments. Must read how to write a city. If you have not. Go back and read that. Some people like to do this. Some people like to build answers slowly. You know when the question asks, right? They start with little, getting more and more and more. In the end, you got the answer. Don't do that. Don't do that. In the exam, yeah, you try to put that lower part, that the conclusion up quickly. Because examiner are looking for uh, the markers are looking for the answer. Once the key answer is there, they are ready to give you mark already. This is where to see whether if you elaborate how to you can go. Yeah? If you don't do that, see, if you get the key answer right, yeah, whatever it is, you get mark. Even eventually, if you call or screw up yourself because you write such a way you can't answer, you still get mark. But if you don't do that, if you slowly write and try to build it to the answer, right? If you get confused or whatever and we don't get you don't get mark at all. Clear? You don't get mark. Because don't know what we're trying to say. Yeah? So that is kind of that is kind of difficult in the sense that how do you get the key answer? Ah, that is most important. Yeah? I think to locate the key answer is very important. We have to try to do that together. Okay. Focus on the questions, that's very important. Okay. Not many people have read <laughs> much, okay, which I don't blame you. It's happened like that every year. Okay. <laughs> okay. On application, I ask you for a social problem. Or I say, you didn't write about any issues. Most of you don't give me evidence. How do you know this is happening? Yeah. I think more than one student, I don't know from this class or the other class, write about social problems and say one of the social problems that we have is Christmas. And I said, how is that a social problem? I thought it's a good thing. Social problem. You know? Okay. Right. In this paper, ask you for contribution and ask you for social problem, it actually is split into two parts. The first part, half of the mark. The second part, half of the mark. The first part, you generally like write more, maybe two paragraphs. The one on application on social problem, probably you write upper part. But that book, <coughs> half of the mark, because that part is there. That part is really your own idea, the analysis. Yeah, so if you don't have that at all, at most, you've got half of the book. And also, try to follow the questions. The questions say, Write about contribution and then write social problem to follow that as a structure of the same. Don't switch it. Because marker expects something. Yeah? If you suddenly start with social problem person, hey, you didn't ask the, answer the question, you know, you didn't read the question carefully. Follow the question. Right? If I cross out your part, it means either repetitive, write right again, 
or not necessary, or it doesn't fit there. Yeah. When I have a cro you know, the arrow that cross like that means that's no connection. This idea is connected with that. Yeah. If I have an angle here, I say, okay, this part has to have another program. <clears throat> now this, I used to be editor. I used to work in the editorial over the section before, and these are like the sign and. Yeah. Most of the, the problem is that one idea is not connect to the next idea. You have to learn to write a good paragraph. A paragraph is not good in most students, I should say, unfortunately. A paragraph should have a topic sentence. Once a topic sentence has been established, that's it already. That paragraph is about a topic sentence and you just want to elaborate and illustrate. When you write, Mark said this, he also said this, and that, and those, and that. This is listing. There are many ideas there. A paragraph has one idea only, you know? Just one idea in the topic sentence. That's why you really have to go and learn how to do it. This needs practice. It's very important, though. I tell you sometimes, it's not about you know or not you know. It's really about you know how to present it. Okay, so that people read and they get it immediately. I told you, on this paper, you do one, uh, what, one and a half page, you will probably spend one minute reading it. Right? So you have to make sure that information jump at the reader, you know? Okay. If you have any questions, you may uh, approach me after class. If I say, if you get it zero, at least you don't know why, you may want to ask to talk to me. Yeah? And I say, if you still don't know how to write this paper, and I tell you, to most students, this is the most difficult part in this class. Yeah? How to choose, which one to choose to write about master kind of most difficult. Yeah? And how to write a story. That's why I show you the DVD. Yeah? And I show you how to write paper of marks. Yeah? But nobody uh, used that. Strange enough. Yeah? Think of how one paragraph proceeds to the next. One paragraph and the next paragraph is not mutually exclusive, you know? A story has to flow from the top to the bottom. Some people, um, some people compare it like building a house, you know? When the things finish, it is a house. It's a whole picture. It's not a fragmented piece here and there, sticking together. Right? Now we're going to now look at topic sentence for these sciences. Theory and research tutorial. Okay. Anyone of you has done the tutorial? Oh, I said I need to write the paper or something to finish, right? I don't know what I don't know. Anyone got anything for me to collect? Anyone got any answer? Anyone? What should I do? Should I continue? continue? Should we skip? Should we go home? You do a tutorial, right? Do you? Do you? Tutorial. The one now. Can you do yourself? I, read, I write too much though. Yeah? I don't want to show you all this because I write too much. Okay, let, let, let's see what is the topic sentence. Now, remind me, uh, later when I finish this, I have to give you some assignment. Okay, I'm going to do the assignment that you don't do. That you won't do. <laughs> you don't want to do assignment. Okay, let's see this. One of the questions they might ask is spell marks. What are the major theoretical arguments for and against the idea of sociology as science of society? The another way to ask is, sociology is scientific study of society. Discuss the debates among sociologists regarding this thing. Do you see the same kind of thing? Twelve months. Ask you for an essay. You clear? 
12 months, ask you what you say. I asked you to do this 15 months, right? And I asked you to write like one and a half pages, something like that, right? Yeah? 12 months is something like that, really. There'll be introduction, paragraphing. Because when it's long and you don't have introduction, people can't follow. That's the idea. How do you introduce? How do you introduce? And I told you introduce introduction would all the Major theoretical, what are major theoretical arguments for and against ideas of science? What are the major theoretical arguments? Can anyone tell me? What are the arguments? What are the arguments? They argue what? Sociology is a social science that seeks to increase human understanding of how social world works. And science is the effect to discover and increase human understanding of how the physical world works. What about the idea against? So you've got to identify the idea of for, idea of against. What do they say about for, what do they say about against, and that is in your introduction. Probably too long for you to do. 
I wrote this, the crime suicide kid example of Popper. I give interpretivist and the realist. Yeah? This one definitely be too long for 12 months, yeah? Right? So you will probably have to take out some of the things or reduce um reduce this one is like the way I write it is like you don't have like description or narration about it, so I write it up for you so that you can read up, you know, um, how to narrate and positivism, interpersonal realism. I will upload this for you, yeah, the answers. But please go back and read, you know, I upload and you don't read, don't know why. Set, uh, question two. Discuss two problems in trying to apply the principle of science to the study of society. In your answer, you start with the two problems as criticized by interviewees and interviewees are you follow the exam question directly, okay? Discuss the two problems. And you say the two problems are choose two of these. Yeah? And after you choose, then you uh, elaborate. First point, second point. of the following and look up direct criticism in handout. Do you remember that? The part that I show you in red and I say you wait until we finish uh, interpretation and realism and you go back and look at one more time. Yeah? I have the goal of what this is this being rejected by that. Objectivity is being rejected by interpretation that, 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 you know. Yeah. You choose just two of that because the question asks for two. Empiricism is being rejected by interpretivism and realism, yeah? That one you already have it in your handout. Number three, explain some of the major differences between scientists studying biology of human body and associates study human behavior. Eight marks, about a page. You start by saying, the major differences are yeah. Then you have to say, you know, you have to look at the question here. Yeah? Use the words in the question. Yeah. So I told you that one you should read, right? Every word means something. You've got to really pick these words to write. You may not want to repeat the word, but you have to use something that means the same thing. This one here says major differences between scientists studying biology and so you have to say, biology of human body, such as heart, lung, etc. Yeah, operates in fixed and non-random manner. You feel that? Their function and how they interlink. Interpretivists argue that human behavior involves meaning and interpretation and is fluid. You see one part here? About the major difference? Yeah. Did they ask for how many? Major differences mean there must be more than one. Yeah, how many you will write? This eight months. At least it will have to be two. Right? So, objectivity, subjectivity, the differences. Yeah? And the third point could be experiment versus flash game. The major differences. Right? You follow? Are you okay? Right? Number four, critically discuss the proposition, the idea of logic of methods of natural science cannot be imported into the study of societies. And this is also nothing different, you know. This is really about science and being criticized by the non-science camp. So, you have to tell them, you see, when you see a port, you have to tell them where the port comes from. Yeah? Whose what this belongs to? So this is a proposition put forth by the interpreters. Yeah? The idea that, you know, the idea that the logic and method of natural science cannot be important is the proposition put forth by the interpreters. That argues that both principle and methods of experiment that natural science used to study nature is not appropriate to study society. Yeah? Now, after that, you have to discuss why society is different from object. Here, 
Be careful, yeah? Be careful. When you write number four like that, it asks for both logic and methods. So you have to tackle both logic and method. The logic is about what? About why society is different from object, the logic. That society is created by the individuals, we have meanings and all that. Yeah? It's about subjective meanings people have. After you discuss the logic, then you discuss the method. Why experiment cannot be used. So you have to target both logic and methods. Number five here, relationship between theories and methods. That is no research without theory. Theory is mainly ontology, epistemology, guide research, for example, the kinds, then you use the kind of often to see how theory guides research, guide the methods. Yeah. Um, we don't have that much time. Let me just go through quickly. Number six, the interpretist tradition developed largely as criticism of positivism. How are these theories of knowledge different? In your answer, refer to the work of these two strategies you have learned about in this course. Yeah? So they ask, how, in fact they are asking for the difference between the two. Yeah? They are asking for the difference. That's very easy for you. That's very easy for you. I have given you goal, actually comparison. Uh, society, how society looks like, society individuals, the method, all those, yeah? Then you take. Whichever point, so you're going to ask them, you tell them what difference, right? Then you tell them, what kind of difference are you going to talk about? You say, okay, difference in goal, difference in the method they use, yeah? Difference in how they view society. Three different things you're going to write. In one, in each paragraph, you write each point. You got it? No, you don't. You got it? Here in the handouts, I have like the slide of three different perspectives that you can compare and trust side by side, right? You can't write all of them. You just have to identify maybe two or three points there that you can compare and trust across. Yeah, and then you tell the reader. Which point are you going to compare on trust? Choose two or three. Yeah? You may say, okay, I'm going to contrast the goal, or I'm going to contrast how they view society, I'm going to contrast and compare the method they use. And in the paper, then they move forward with that. Okay, and this one here. Another part is say, in your answer, refer to the work of at least two sociologists. If you don't have two sociologists, they give you very no mark because you didn't answer the question. Okay, I think I'll upload this. You go back and read up yourself. Any problems, you come back and ask. You should ask soon, you know, before we, we don't see each other anymore.